Very excited to uh, to be joined by our next guest, uh, a buddy of mine for many years. We've shared a lot of NBA games together. A lot of people don't know this guy is a huge sports fan, very knowledgeable when it comes to all things, uh, all things Patriots and Mets. And I almost had an opportunity to join the Bucks tape. Was going to leave the New York Knicks fandom to go be a Bucks fan at one point. Didn't take it though. Didn't do it. Josh Ostrowski, a.k.a. the Fat Jewish, my dear friend, joins the show right now. Remember that? Remember when you were thinking about joining the Bucks tape? That was a long time ago, buddy. I had had enough, okay? A lot of years, a lot of trauma, and it was, yes, sometimes you think about doing crazy things. And you know what? I think I'd be pretty happy right now because instead of a first-round loss and instead of Julius Randle getting bodied up by Danilo Gallinari, I would be with Bobby Portis and his psychotic eyes celebrating a world championship. So maybe I should have. <laughs> You spent a lot of time in Milwaukee over the years. You've been to some Bucks games. Uh, what were your thoughts on the Deer District? I know you do great in crowds. You know what's really funny is actually, so yeah, my, uh, my ex-wife, who was, uh, she was from Wisconsin, you know, very broad-shouldered, you know, something, something in the milk out there. They build them big, you know. Kind of <laughs> and, uh, I went to, uh, very sturdy. She's not blowing over in a storm, you know, legs like redwoods. And I spent a lot of time out there. And actually, you know, funny enough, their fans are like, you know, they're complete maniacs. You know, they're all hanging out and like, you know, cause they eat at casino buffets. They're beautiful Americans, honestly. I celebrate them truly, which was another reason that I thought about defecting. And, you know, it's interesting. I saw in New, in New York once, I saw, I saw the Greek freak. I saw Giannis in a Greek restaurant uh, called Pilos in the East Village, and he's eating an entire Branzino, like just a beautiful Branzino, you know. And I walked up to him, and I think his manager kind of knew who I was. He had no idea who I was. And he was like, oh, you the dude from Instagram. And I said to Giannis, I said, yo, and I named a, a Greek restaurant in Milwaukee, and his eyes lit up, and he, and I, he said, yo, the, the Greek food in Milwaukee is horrible. And then I pitched him on coming to New York simply because the Suvlaki in Milwaukee is like eating leather. And he couldn't believe that I knew the name of this restaurant. And I think, I really thought I got through to him, and I really thought I could lure him to New York. But guess what? It didn't work. No, no. The guy was <laughs> loving smoothies. I, I wasn't expecting him to have a delicious moussaka out there. Uh, if he was going to get that, it was going to be back in New York. Uh, we've had a lot of fun memories at the Garden eating $15 John George chicken sandwiches. Let me tell you, I remember <laughs> going to Fan Appreciation Night when they gave out free food at the end of the game. Uh, you've now upgraded to the Spike Lee seats. Uh, what have been some of your favorite encounters with players while watching games at the Garden? Oh, man. So, you know, actually, I, one of my most prized possessions is they give you, they now give you a blue card when you get a warning. They used to just give you a warning. They'd be like, shut up, you big fat clown. Now they tell you, shut up, you big fat clown to me. And they also give you a blue card that says a whole thing on it. If you get warned again, you're going to get thrown out. And I've started collecting them. And so, you know, if you go too hard, you're going to get thrown right out. But to get the blue card, it's the perfect mix of sort of PG-13. Um, you know, I talked to Dw I got in Dwight Howard's head about how tiny his jersey was. Like, why are his jerseys always so small? Uh, Zach Randolph for looking like a Ninja Turtle. Um, you know, I once, you know, started, oh, I told, I screamed on, um, you know, one of your favorite players of all time, Landry Fields, after he signed a big contract with Toronto. No idea why they would do that that he should spend some of his new money on me at Benny Han. I got into a fight with his fiance. He called me a bad person. Uh, Matt Barnes once threatened to kill me. I mean, there have been some really incredible memories at the Garden. I remember going down to uh, the John Wall, Jeremy Lin rematch for Lin Sanity with you. We drove down to D.C. outside the White House, spending some time at the, uh, they were giving out free chicken sandwiches from the sky at the, uh, at the Wizards <laughs> game. Remember that? They had the parachutes of the chicken sandwiches. You know, it's really crazy how it's crazy how few incredible memories we have together. We've gone to so many games, and yet it's like the chicken time. We got a free chicken sandwich. The, the seven games that Lynn Sanity happened. Like, there's so few incredible memories. Really. That's that's what it means to be a Nick fan. What I want to sit here and have you come on the show, and we can talk about Lou Amundsen. No, we don't need to do that. <laughs> Um, let, let's talk about though, this world of comedy and sports. A lot of people, you know, know you from Instagram now, which is insane to me and always brings a smile to my face as you know. Uh, but, but a lot of people don't know you're a diehard sports fan. What's it been like getting to connect with other players in sports, guys like Blake Griffin, who I know you're friend, uh, friends with, you know, and do some comedy stuff and, uh, and also have your, you know, your, your sports dreams come to life. Yeah, it's been pretty awesome. You know, it's like, 
you know, when you're a Z-list celebrity like me, you know, life on the Z-list, you can really, you can really slide into the DMs of some like not, you know, you're just, I'm not connecting with top tier players. Like, you know, Zion is not responding to my DMs. I DM him all the time. I want to know how the muffaladas are down in New Orleans. He never reads them. He never responds, obviously. But I can get, you know, I can get into the DMs of some lesser known players and, and you know, across all sports. Um, and we can hang out like, you know, like, did I go, did I go to PF Chang's with LaShawn McCoy? I sure did. Um, you know, I've been able to cultivate some real memories because, you know, I'm sliding in, I got a blue check mark. So they see it and they're like, oh, this guy got a lot of followers. Um, and a lot of these guys, uh, you know, they're just kind of hanging out. We can really, uh, we can get together and make some memories. Some of them are not all that busy. Um, and so, you know, some of the, some of the more B-list and retire guys want to hang out and have a, maybe have a sleepover. So I've gotten to connect with a lot of, a lot of cool dudes. None of them top tier. Maybe Blake Griffin's probably the best player I've ever really hung out with. Well, now I would imagine you're part of the NBA wine circles as the co-founder of Babe, which sold to Budweiser. Uh, what are some of your favorite NBA wines? Well, I would really more like to talk about who are some of my favorite NBA player sommeliers. Um, obviously, C.J. McCollum, incredible palate. I, I mean, his, his nose, you know, when he smells a big body of Barolo, he really, an audacious Barolo, he really knows how to enjoy He had it. to have his and room I, set at the appropriate temperature down in the he, bubble to maintain the flavor <laughs> in the Pinot Noir. He, he turned his room into an actual temperature-controlled wine cellar. He loves a buttery Chardonnay. You know, he loves something with a lot of legs and a lot of body. Um, obviously, you know, LeBron's wine cellar, super famous. Um, I actually have an incredible story. There's a there's a uh, kind of is an A-list celebrity I know. LeBron, you know, slid into their DM years ago. So I like to see I like you to see my wine cellar. I think it might be a pickup line of his. I'm really not sure. <laughs> um, and so there's a lot of guys now who love wine. I mean, it used to be just True Bledsoe, and now it's really everybody. Channing Fry, Sasha Vujicic, oh, Kevin oh, Love, no, what? Mellow. Oh, you sent me you sent me a photo of Sasha Vujicic in a cowboy hat, drinking. I believe uh, he might have been drinking a Malbec in like a vineyard, like somewhere outside of Santa Rosa. And I was like, this is incredible. I framed it. It's in my home. Alexander I, I, I out in Paso Robles. Don't do tastings if you want to go have a Pinot with <laughs> Sasha, but you can get a nice bottle for your buddy. Um, you and I do like uh, to send each other fun photos and Instagram videos. I sent you a, a video of Ronaldo Balkman off Cameo wishing you congratulations for your <laughs> wedding. Uh, what are you working on these days? What kind of memorabilia might I expect to sending my way soon? You know, a couple different things. One of the one of my favorite things I sent you recently, obviously, was the inexplicable release of the of the Air Langston Galloway shoe. Now I know the proceeds are going to like a good cause, and it's all very good. But I don't know who did the design. But they are some of the most. Di it's like wearing two diapers on your feet. They are the absolute most busted shoes. I like. Why is Langston Galloway coming out with a shoe? I'm obviously going to cop a pair because I'm a I'm a collector of bad shoes. I have like ten pairs of Starberries that I got at Stephen Barry's back in the day. <laughs> or, you know, free wells with the spinners, the yeah. dadas. You know, I have a lot of you know anything that was horrible that ever came out. But uh, things you can expect from me um, coming up in the near future. You know, actually, you guys were just talking about that plane flight. That's really interesting. Do you think? Like, I didn't even, I don't, I saw a guy one time on a plane that I went to high school with and I almost had a panic attack. We didn't even talk. Imagine being on a plane with these guys who just beat you in the finals. Like, they're probably not all syncing up a movie and watching it together, right? Like, pressing play at the same time. No, I don't think so. I don't think there's a great Nancy Myers movie that Devin Booker is sharing in the back of the plane <laughs> with Chris Devin Middleton. Booker, do, do, you, uh, do, you guys, do you guys want to watch Under the Tuscan Sun? Or, like, I'm basically down for whatever. And Chris Middleton is like, get out of my, my actual face. Um, it's probably, it's definitely got to be pretty awkward. I'll probably send you more cameos. Patrick Ewing notoriously does the absolute worst cameos in the world. The TV's on in the back. You can hear like a commercial for like a rental car company. <laughs> he's the most low energy. The camera is like at his chin, very boomer, like below his face. And he's like, happy birthday, Melinda. And you're hearing like a Salino and Barnes commercial blaring. And you turn <laughs> the TV off. Like somebody paid $45 for this. Turn off the TV. Like, come on, Patrick. So you'll probably be getting a lot more of those. For me, pictures of Alexi Shved. You know how it goes. Oh, I love Alexi Shved's Instagram. A great follow on social media. At the Fat <laughs> Jewish joins the show. Josh Ostrowski, Ben Lyons filling in for Rich on the Rich Eisen Show. I remember watching the 2011 NBA Finals Game 4 meltdown from LeBron with you in a bank in Brooklyn uh, underneath a Kanye West show. I've watched mm -hmm. some weird mm -hmm. NBA Finals games with you over the years. Where have been some mm -hmm. of the strange places you've watched Super Bowls? Because you were a Patriots fan in New York City all those years. Yeah, it was a pretty. It was pretty hard. My family, my family 
My family hates me. I mean, not because of that, but also because of that, in addition to some other things. But, yeah, it was, it was really hard. I mean, I come from a family of Jet fans. My, my dad wears, like, a 4X Kevin Mawai jersey. I mean, these guys are real dirtbags, and they were, you know, really wanted to disown me. I mean, look, it, it's, when I went to, you know, I, wasn't, I went to sort of an artistic school in New York, not a lot of sports fans, when I was in middle school. And at Jewish summer camp, you know, obviously where a young Jewish boy learns everything he knows, I was with a bunch of guys from North Alabama, Massachusetts, and, you know, they were diehard Teddy Bruschi fans. I picked it up, and, uh, you know, I entered into an – I made an absolutely horrible choice in the summer of 95 that I can now not go back on, and I can never undo the past. But it's been, it's been really, really hard. Yeah, it's not it's, – I, it's I have a lot of trauma. I feel like now I'm talking to my therapist. Like, this is good, actually. <laughs> Josh Ostrowski joins the show at The Fat Jewish on Instagram. When – for people who follow you, uh, uh, you know, on Instagram now, which is like 11 million people on Earth, which is just so stupid. Mm -hmm. um, wh when did you start to notice that it was like making a, a change? I remember going to Nick games with you and it started to be, you know, a thing that you were at the game. So when did you start to feel your life starting to change from Instagram? Um, well, all right, I'm going to go back. I'm going to go back one. I'm going to tell you real quick, my weirdest, my weirdest, my weirdest Super Bowl viewing story. Uh, went to the south of France. Uh, I was invited by some uh, some Saudi Arabian guys. I used to have a thing where if you DM'd me and I had a time in my schedule, I would basically go and do whatever you invited me to. Not for money, just to make memories. And so, you know, I got myself in some very weird situations, but I wanted to meet new people and have weird experiences, and people invite me to all kinds of bizarre stuff, and they think I'm not going to respond because they think with an account as big as mine that I'm never going to see it. So they get drunk, and they're like, you're never going to see this. You're the worst. And then I'm like, actually, I read all my DMs because I'm a pettyweight champion, and I saw this, and I'll, like, I'm down to roast you. And so these uh, guys from the Middle East invited me. I flew out to France. I went on a yacht. They actually had a live, they had a, um, a lo a, uh, an ostrich on their, on their yacht. They're like, do you want to see something crazy? And I go downstairs. They have a live ostrich on the boat. And the ostrich's name, I'm not kidding you, was Bradley Cooper, because they were a huge Bradley Cooper fans, American actor Bradley Cooper. And I then sat on a boat with an ostrich and watched the Super Bowl with them on like a 100-inch flat screen. And I'm looking around going, they flew me out there, and I'm going, where am I? Like, this seems like a very questionable, very, very questionable decision. So Instagram has led me to a lot of wild places. Um, I, I'm trying to think, like, the first time... The first, I remember I was in the West Village and I was kind of day drunk. I had been, you know, kind of doing sort of a Sex of the City brunch style. And someone ran up to me and put their hands over my eyes from behind and was like, yeah, so. And I was like, what is happening? I was kind of schmacked. And I turned around and it was Fran Drescher. And I think in that moment, I realized like, wow, people are really seeing this stuff. Like, I, you know, you kind of, when you have a big account, you post and you think it's just for your idiotic friends, you know, like you. But you don't realize Fran Drescher's looking too. And sometimes when I think about it, it makes me, it makes me nervous. I'm like, is Fran going to like this? What if Fran unfollows me? Like, what if Fran <laughs> hates this? Because she's an icon and should be on Mount Rushmore. And I think at that moment... I realized, wow, this is really, really wild. No, that was like your Giannis getting the MVP last night and the championship. Finally, a culmination of work, <laughs> a lifetime of sacrifice. The nanny came up to you after brunching in Soho. Uh, ben Lyons here on The Rich Eisen Show, joined by Josh Ostrowski. Uh, where were you when you found out the news that Carmelo went to Portland? I don't know. Only you would know that, you psycho. Nobody <laughs> cared about that. Like, I was, I am so, you know, you need to just, you, he needs to hire you. The amount of press you're, the amount of pub you're doing for this guy. Like, I wake up at like, first of all, it's 8 o'clock in the morning in New York. It's 5 in L.A. I don't know why you're up. And you're sending me a text being like, did you know, fun fact of the morning, Carmelo Anthony is the leader in all time in Team USA minutes logged when the team registered a win of more than 10 points. And I'm like, it doesn't literally matter. The guy went to one Western Conference final. He's a trash man. You are doing constant PR for this guy. The day he came to the Knicks, you cried in a bar. I'm you sorry. Won. I have a photo of you eating a sandwich named after him with Lala at the Carnegie Deli. So let's challenge flag on the field okay, right hold now. Hold on. Hold on. When you're with an American hero like Lala Anthony, okay, you, like, I'm a huge Lala fan. Am I not allowed to split the two? And she put me on the spot. By the way, you put a pastrami sandwich in a fat Jewish guy's face, and then as it was in my mouth, you went, this is called the Carmelo Anthony. And what was I going to do? I couldn't disrespect him like that, although, honestly, I really wanted to. Because outside of Amari Stoudemire, who, by the way, I don't know if you now know he's a rabbi and a farmer, um, there's really no Nick that I've ever hated more. And you know that, sir. No, I know. I know you've had some encounters with Amari down in the meatpacking district and it wasn't in a wine <laughs> in a wine spa I'll tell you that
Uh, Josh, I appreciate you joining the show. You think we'll get a Knicks title in our in our lifetime? All right, Ben, it's been great. Thanks so much. <laughs> Josh, Thanks so much for having me. Honestly, Rich Eisen, Rich Eisen, you're a beautiful man. Thank, uh, and the answer to your question is absolutely not. Although, look, you know, we do have the 20th pick. So, like, you know, what's going to happen this year? It's going to be magical. Oh, yeah, by the way, congratulations on being a father. Haven't had a chance to talk to you in real life. You had to use this <laughs> show as an excuse to say congratulations. I just, I just want to note, by the way, that I gave my son the middle name of Kobe to represent the late and great Kobe Bryant, okay? I want you to know that. I rode for L.A. on that, and uh, it's really, really scary that I am somebody's father. I think I sent you the birth announcement. Within the first three days of being born, I put him on a giant hoagie and pretended he was to eat him on a sandwich. So that kid's going to be in $600 an hour therapy within the next couple years. So it's an exciting time <laughs> for me, not really for him. Well, we're 20 years away from buddy Kobe King getting a four-year, $200 million deal from the Knicks after he blows out an Achilles with you on a jet ski. So looking forward to that. Yeah, he, he's Jewish, so he's not an athlete. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for joining the show, Josh. <laughs> Thank you for joining the show. Appreciate it. Love that guy. Grew up with Josh. So much fun when you see your friends who have been ridiculed, chastised for being themselves for years get a chance to now enjoy life like this. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.